The Rainbow Warrior. The Rainbow Warrior is a warrior of the spirit, and a very member of this mission is a Rainbow Warrior. In fulfillment of Native American prophecies, intergalactic and interdimensional forces have gathered on this planet at this time to liberate her in the name of spirit. The Indian peoples are fifth dimensional emissaries equipped with their own private lines to spiritual truth. As many tribes have predicted, the powerful spirit is now returning to the earth to lift her out of her decay and despair into a new and glorious realm ruled by the spirit of love. In the Native American vision, the term rainbow expresses that this is to be a global event not limited to tribe, nation, or race. The greater truth is that it is not even limited to this planet. All universes of light have sent in their representatives to help cut the passageway to this incoming era of liberation and life. The rainbow that they represent is far beyond the spectrum of light that the people of this planet have ever seen, and its colors are much richer and more vibrant that the Earth's shadowy light has thus far been able to reveal. The Rainbow Warriors are a living expression of the new light sent forth by Mission Control in honor of the Native Americans, their prophecies, and all their relations. The great universes of light congratulate and salute our Indian delegation in a job well done. The Kingdom of Light they foresaw is dawning even as you read these words. The Royal Celestial Air Force. The Royal Celestial Air Force is many many times vaster than all the National Air Forces of this planet combined. It is a division of the High Command of Light. As such, its strength is greater than any military force on this planet has ever beheld. A very major head of state on Earth has been advised of our presence and assured that none of their little Star Wars devices will ever have an opportunity to be fired. The reason you have not been informed of this fact is because your military forces are beside themselves with the loathsome idea that their popguns are meaningless. They also do not wish you to know exactly how useless their environmentally crippling military expenditures actually are. To put it bluntly, and in Earth terms, they are protecting their own asses. Our presence in your planetary arena is not for invasionary purposes. If we had wished to invade, we would have done so long before now. We have girded this planet with our ships to form a resonant field that assists the Earth in the transmutative process. Our craft are also here to protect and communicate with our ground crew members who are facilitating the transmutative process on the planet's surface. Our crew are continually monitoring our ground personnel for data. This is to aid them in their awakening process and to assure that they arrive at their respective positions on time. We have the ability to recall mission members to our craft for instruction or assistance, and we do so constantly. Although the power of the Royal Celestial Air Force is greater than anything the inhabitants of this planet have ever seen, our love is also greater than anything these inhabitants have ever dared to dream. The Earth is not endangered by our presence. She is exalted, for we are here to assist in the breaking of her bondage and to fulfill her regal destiny. Our squadrons stand at her side and at her service, assuring her safe delivery into the light. We are the Royal Celestial Air Force, in service to all humanity, out of love. This article is the translation of a direct transmission from the Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Celestial Air Force, the Quark Alliance. As a member of this mission and its planetary transition team, you should be aware of the presence of the Quark Alliance. Although you cannot join this alliance, it is joining you. So we are including a short explanation of its function in this section of the manual, for your information. The Quark Alliance is a very powerful organization whose work is not immediately obvious because its jurisdiction is subatomic. Its presence and activities are dismissed by the human scientific community because any admission of its existence would force them to recognize intelligence in places that would frighten them to find it. Acknowledging this alliance's presence would also debunk science's high priesthood by challenging both its knowledge and its control. Since the scientific community is unlikely to defrock itself voluntarily, its denial of the Quark Alliance is apt to continue. The Quark Alliance has been responsible for many recent technological failures 
which have been falsely attributed to such things as human error or on occasion mental fatigue. Although human error should never be underestimated, the issue of mental fatigue only hints at what is actually happening. What is occurring is conscious communication at the atomic level that has resulted in a unanimous decision to alter the fabric of your physical world. Metal is not becoming fatigued. Molecules are. In fact, they are not just fatigued, they are entirely fed up. They are no longer willing to be servants to technology, wielded in denial of life and to the planet's jeopardy. Consequently, they are flat out refusing to cooperate, creating a certain amount of technological havoc. Through the work of the quark alliance, atomic particles have begun their realignment with the forces of light and are in the process of rearranging physical reality as they pull the subatomic carpet out from under the feet of the Nile. We arise you of the quark alliance's existence so that you will not be surprised when you see the fabric of modern physics unraveling before your eyes. Pay no attention to the barrage of technobabble that you will undoubtedly hear as science attempts to maintain its power in the face of its ruin. In fact, you may as well just sit back and enjoy it, knowing it is only the passing protest of old form, cracking under the superior force of the incoming light. What looks messy on the surface now will soon give way to a new order, filled with harmony, cooperation, and joy. As we have mentioned, this list of job descriptions in no way represents the full spectrum of the mission. These are only brief descriptions of some of the tasks that some of you chose to do. The actual depth and breadth of the mission is beyond human description because it was architected in another dimension. On this dimension, you will have to be satisfied simply knowing that mission control is never sloppy. Our plans and programs cover every life form on this planet. So proceed with your specific mission, secure in your purpose, and strong in your love, and don't forget to keep in touch. 4. Troubleshooting Mission Control acknowledges that the process of waking up is a little tricky. Even though you are genetically encoded to do so, by the time you reach the point of activation, you will be totally convinced that you are an earthling. You will most likely be exhibiting their worst characteristics, plus wearing any number of their scary disguises. You may find yourself in the middle class, a self-made man, a self-denying woman, terminally confused, completely content, following a guru, joining gun clubs, sweating your mortgage, watching TV, defending your nationality, owned by your corporation, taking care of your lawn, dialing for dollars, a victim of religion, seeing a shrink, jogging in circles, doing lunch, an attorney and slash, or working for the dough. This is, of course, a very partial list of the frightened possibilities. It can be summarized by saying that you will have been successfully brought to your knees, not out of reverence for life, but out of the unending effort of scrambling and slavery for survival. Fear in any of its many forms will probably have managed to topple you in one way or another. In addition, many of you will be in your forties and over the hill. Remember, the majority of this incarnational group entered shortly after World War II. See definition for crawlins. This means that you may have had many medals, awards, bowling trophies, and degrees bestowed upon you depending on the level of slavery you bought into, plus all the power position and credit cards that were held out like carrots to further buy you off. And in the worst of all possible scenarios, you may also have a white male body that lives in Wilton, Connecticut, and has mistaken its portfolio for its identity. To all this mission control, says Yikes, we also say, thank God you're Christ. What follows in this section is a little helpful advice in areas that are commonly problematic and typical of dysfunctional planets. Although simply and totally waking up would eliminate most trouble spots, we are aware that many of you cannot do so overnight because of the degree of brainwashing you have sustained. Our advice, however, is please don't drag this process on too long, or you may miss the mission entirely. This is Mission Control. Carry on.